What's up, YouTube? Mr. LawMSC here, and today I'm going to be talking about chess. So, a couple years ago, something like that, we talked about um, racks, and I promised that I would get to chess at some point, and that point is today. So, what we're going to be discussing is the differences between the chest, how the chest roll, and uh, kind of what is about the chest as well, what you're looking for, when you want to target different chests, all of those things, right? So the first thing, let's jump on over to our D2 screen. The first thing that we want to talk about is the various kinds of chest, right? So you have your basic chest, and we can go out here very quickly. Right, so let's just find a chest of some sort. <laughs> Where's the chest at? There we go. Chest! So, this is a basic chest. When you click on this chest, it will have a chance to drop something or a chance to not drop something. And this, these chests roll um, with magic find and all of that. So this is your first kind of chest. This is just your regular chest. Now your second kind of chest, darn, I was hoping that was one of those buildings, is called a super chest. At least that's what I call it and many people call it. And a super chest. Let's see if we can find it. Thank you, Homo Guard. Alright, we don't have any super chest out here. Uh, let's go to... We're just going to have a good super chest. Super chest are going to be like your lower cross chest. Right? So these are going to be the ones that you know have those like cool drop chances. I'm going to try and find the tower. Because the tower also has some, um, so I'm going to try and, like, see if I can find any super chests in the tower for us. Let's have this. There's the racks. We already did our racks talk. There we go, right here. So, for instance, this right here is a super chest. Okay. How do you know it's a super chest? Well, you just have to know, which is kind of the difficult part about it. Um, so super chest basically look like normal chest, but they're specifically set. Yeah, you can tell by the way it is. They're specific, specifically set like uh, with a tile, right? So whenever you have this tile, Right? The one that comes into this room has these pillars like this, has these candles. You guys have probably seen this before if you've run the tower. There's also the, you know, there's like this tile exists where you always have these three graves, right? Um, I'm going to try and see if we can get the other one because there's another. Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, there's another super chest tile in the tower and it's the one where it meets at that like t right kind of the angled t you go in you've got some of those pillars and then it branches out uh this way and this way oh we could use paint oh my favorite always an excuse to use paint right chat okay let me capture it really fast window capture paint beautiful so basically it's it's this one right here in the tower it goes like this and then you've got like pillar pillar you know pillar pillar and there'll be like a chest here there's probably like more pillars back here or whatever thank you Coleman. right and so here is here is like your chest and so you'll like walk into this room and, you know, it's like, oh, maybe the exit's over here, whatever it is. But regardless, this is a specific set tile in the game. And this chest is also a super chest. 
So um, that's a simple, easy way to see that. And so when you pop this chest, you're going to get something. And this is where you're going to get different kinds of rolls because super chests have a different way that they roll. And once again, we'll get into how all these things dropped, the difference of all of that stuff. Now, the third and final one is going to be a sparkly chest and this is what a lot of people accidentally mistake super chest to be is sparkly chest actually i should just continue hmm, no that's a different chest. um so let's go to the mausoleum find it really fast So if you get to the end of the mausoleum, right there, this is a sparkly chest. And once again, thank you Sabanchi, this will have its own um, style of drops. So there's three different chests in this game, and people um, often mistake them and have questions about what can each chest drop, what is it all? Um, Yada yada yada. So sometimes people call super chests special chest or something like that. Um, but these are not sparkly chests. They are um, different. So uh, let us go through, and I'm, I've got kind of a um, written out guide that goes through a lot of the math and things. So I'll be reading and kind of explaining some of this stuff. Um, so Essentially, when you go to a chest, first off, will the chest be locked or not is a random determination that the game is going to be making. Um, so let us go down to, let me get to that part. <laughs> um, okay. So first, the game checks whether the chest is unlocked. So well, I guess we'll talk about the lock in a second. Uh, let's just do how do chests drop? We'll kind of start here. So each non-sparkly chest is assigned a flag, which determines whether it's special or not, and that's dependent on where it exists, right? And then it will choose from the special chest dropping or the regular chest dropping codes. Um, and then this is important to how it drops. Uh, so the chance for a chest to be locked is monster level divided by two plus eight percent, where monster level one is an area dependent variable stored in levels.txt. Um, so basically the area, the level of the area in normal difficulty of classic Diablo 2. Um, complicated way but essentially just know a chest goes through a calculation of whether or not it'll be locked and that's based on the monster the area level essentially um beyond that let's take a look at regular chest there's not too much to regular chest the first thing is the game chest checks whether the chest is unlocked if that's true there's a 75 percent chance for a drop cycle to occur if it's locked instead the game will per perform two cycles of this check, okay? So you're going to have a higher chance of a locked chest dropping items. In both cases, the quality of the drop is determined just like with a monster drop, okay? So it goes through the quality selection. It does take into account your magic find testing for quality all of this stuff. A lot of people are always like, does my magic find affect chest drops? The answer is yes, it actually does for a regular chest. Okay. Now, if you go to things like special chest or super chest, you're not going to be taking that into account. So let's go talk to, let's switch over to super chest now, because regular chests are pretty simple, right? They just do that uh, chance for the drop cycle, if it's locked, it does double chance for it, and then it drops based on your magic find. Simple as that. Now, with Super Chest, the first main difference um, is the quality selection is completely skipped, and instead a random roll is done 
based on which all items are assigned either magic quality or rare quality. Uh, so you'll notice when a super chest drops that you get all of the, the items in the chest will be magic or all of the items in the chest will be rare, right? That, that always happens. It's, it's always one of those two when you, when you click on it. And I want to get... Uh, I wish I had a, the lower cross because that's a great easy like chest that you can just go run over and over again um, to just oh we'll pop this one so three blues right once again do you guys notice this tile looks familiar wow they just copied a tile out of the uh, tower they smoothed it into the mausoleum and it's the exact same tile. And notice the chest is still there, and that is a super chest. So that's actually a great example of uh, showing that, like, hey, look, you have a super chest right here. And here's your tile repeated in other places. Um, I know, I'll take very quick. Wait, do you have all of the... All quests? Oh, okay. I think I might have have this. Let me go to get this character really fast. Document, save games. Okay. Save game. Uh -huh. And perfect. Add character version. All right, I'll just delete all this. Yeah, I was hoping that I could rename it. Oh wait, that still might not work. Oh, it does work. Okay, cool. Not here. Still have no vision. Okay, perfect. D F D whatever. Okay. So now we can go and look at Laura Kurost. Right, and this is where, as many of you guys know, you look for the campfire. And this is where a lot of people will do super chest farming. So we run around, we look for the campfire. This is a super chest, that is a super chest, and this is a super chest. Right? This is this is common uh, knowledge. This is and people love these super chests specifically because with these super chests, you're going to get um, up to a burr rune is the possible drop for this. You can have up to two campfires as well. I have a whole guide on how all of that works. And I want to grab some keys really fast because I'm hoping that I can get the show that I want with it. Okay, Lord Cross. See if we can find a second campfire at all. We can, perfect. So once again, blue, 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 yellow, yellow. Okay, so it's not doing a quality check and like maybe giving you these whites or giving you uniques or anything like that, right? It will give you all blue items or all rare items. That is just how super chests work. It is as simple as that. Okay. Um, now, let's go to some of the details with all of that. The chance for it to be all blue items is 95% chance, and the chance for it to be rare is 5%. Now, there's two important things. If an item cannot spawn as rare, for instance, a charm, it will be spawn magic instead. So you can have 
a magic charm there, right? The quality determination is independent of the drops, right? So it does not use the same seed as the chest. In particular, there's no such thing as a rare or a magic pattern here, okay? So that's the quality determination just goes on its own, right? Um, and so this is because super chests have these patterns, which is what people will talk about um, in the, the what well, we will talk about, but what you'll hear people talk about as well. Oh yes, magic find matters nothing whatsoever with super chest farming. So when you're doing your LK farming, you don't need to like stack up your magic find or anything like that. You just want to have 200 FCR and high enough life so you don't die. Um, so the drops start with one drop cycle in the unlock case and two drop cycles in the lock case. And after all of these have occurred, the game will check the first item in each cycle to see whether it has a quality of magic or above, um, aka whether it's magic or rare. Uh, if this test is positive, the drop algorithm will terminate and there are no further drops. Two important notes on, on this. If there are no drops in a cycle, it will simply count this as a failed magic plus or rare drop test. Um, which items may spawn as magic plus is most constant across patches, blah, 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 blah. Um, yada, yada, yada. Ignore that. Uh, if the magic plus test failed, then we entered the second part of the special chest algorithm. The game will now attempt a total of 10 more drop cycles, performing a rare test on the first item of each cycle, except the 10th after its completion. And this is the standard way that we've talked about um, how this works in many other things, right? How can you shop a, you know, scepter with holy shield on it? How can you, uh, you know, how can a um, shrine, if you guys watch the shrines video, how can a shrine in the rogue or, you know, the blood more spawn resist fire, right? Like it's not supposed to be able to do those things, but the game sets up these cycles where it will abort and just accept whatever it is after a certain number so that it doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop, right? Um, so uh, basically, the chest will, can drop, these chests can drop tons of items um, because they're constantly going to go through these drop cycles over and over testing on the first item of the drop cycle if it can be like rare or whatever it is. Um, so let's take a look now at uh, some sparkly chests and we'll come back to super chest. It won't go infinite items, but super chest can drop a lot of items <laughs> um, because they do eventually cut it. So sparkly chest. First off, their drops are unaffected by their lock status. Um, so that's one thing people always think is like, oh, if the sparkly chest is locked, it's got more whatever. No. So with sparkly chest, that is not the case. Um, the, the game will do a random roll to determine one of six cases into which the sparkly chest algorithm may go. As with Super Chest, the game uses forced quality drops and the Magic Plus or the rare, unique, whatever test, only that um, here, only some dry drop cycles are affected by them. So Sparkly Chests are actually really interesting because they have the ability to actually drop uniques and sets. So case one, two, and three. Case one, two, and three occur with a chance of 2%, 4%, and 6% respectively. And apart from that, only differ in what quality they force on their first two drop cycles. To make it easy on ourselves, we use the shorthand X for the quality in question. X equals unique, set, or rare for case 1, 2, 3, respectively. The game starts with each of these cases by making a drop cycle with forced quality X. If it passes the uh, Magic Plus test, the algorithm stops. But if it fails, another drop cycle with force quality X is performed, and once again, the algorithm stops if it passes the test. If both magic plus tests fail, the algorithm will call case six. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Case four. This case occurs with a chance of 20% and will attempt to do up to 10 drop cycles with the force quality of magic. 
After each cycle is completed, a magic test uh, plus test is performed, and once at least three magic plus tests returned a positive result, the remaining drop cycles are canceled. If all drop cycles fail to produce an item, i.e. there are 40 consecutive no drops, the game will then call case six. Um, this chance does not happen. That's a one in a million chance. Case five, um, this occurs with a 30% chance and like case four, it will attempt up to 10 drop cycles with a forced quality of magic. After each cycle is completed, the magic plus test is performed and once at least two of these tests return a positive result, the remaining drop cycles are canceled. Um, if the very first two cycles pass the magic plus test, the game will perform another drop cycle without forced magic quality. This will be followed by seven gold drops if the last cycle dropped nothing, and by six gold drops if it did. If the algorithm does not terminate after the first two cycles, it will not do such an extra cycle. Instead, follow up a series of forced magic cycles by a number of gold drops equal to blah, 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 blah. Um, there's some math there. Case six. This case occurs with a chance of 38%, and like the two cases before, it will attempt up to 10 drop cycles with the forced quality of magic. After each cycle is completed, I know this is a little intricate, but we'll go through and show a little bit after this. It will attempt up to 10 drop cycles, forced quality. After each cycle is completed, a magic cluster, and at least one magic test returns positive, then it will cancel the results, uh, or the remaining drop cycles, um, and then it will perform a number of drop cycles without forced quality after that. In consequence, a sparkly chest will either drop very few items, as little as one item, if case one starts with a unique, followed by three no drops, or a staggering amount of items that fail to fit on the screen. Cases one, two, and three may drop up to 57 items, cases four and six up to 49 items, case five up to 40 items, all of which are above the limit of how many items can be displayed at once, which is 32. Um, so basically, the game goes through and does all of these checks. Why do I feel like we need a PowerPoint? I mean, it'd be good. Um, all of these checks. And so let's go and check out some sparkly chests right here before we go into some of these other things. Okay, so let's go to the mausoleum. I believe the crypt also has one. I'll look for our room. Cool. Sparkly chest. Okay, so we have regular chest. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and clear out some of the stuff here. Thank you to fail. Got some keys. Perfect. So, as you can see, the number of items dropped is a ton, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, it is uh, a metric ton right here. Right. And you'll notice blue, 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 right? So we have gone through and we have dropped what? six blue items from this chest? I believe so. Um, so if we go to our cases, uh, basically it goes through and let's go back to the magic plus check 
um, for this. So, da, 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 two drops, I did a game, I'll check. Right. Da, 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 da. Let me find it real fast. So the magic plus test is um, whether it is magic or rare, um, and then if the test is positive, right? And so basically it's checking that there is not a no drop roll. And so like we said, it can go and it will hit and it says item drop. Yes, magic. Cool. And it drops it and they'll do it again, do it again, do it again. And so that's where we're getting, you know, blue, 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 blue. And it's going through these different um, cases right here. For that, this probably did case four. Would be my assumption, something around there. Um, and then going beyond. So let's go find another. Let's go to the mausoleum. I mean, the crypt. I really want to get a unique chest. The fun one to, to go through. Okay. So once again, we have a sparkly chest. And again, we have dropped three blues from this, and then it has canceled after that. So, you can have this, you can drop your blues, you can drop your rares, you can drop uniques. Sparkly Chest can drop all qualities of these items. Um, where are all of these chests? Uh, with Super Chest, they are going to be the tile dependent. And I guess sparkly chests are also de tile dependent, but sparkly chests are also always in like these exact spots. So for instance, there's always one, thank you like a box. There's always one chest here, one sparkly chest in the crypt, one sparkly chest in the mausoleum, one sparkly chest um, in the sewers level two, one sparkly chest, you know, etc. There's none in Act 4. Yeah, none in Act 4, um, but these sparkly chests exist in these different areas. One in the ancient tunnels. It's kind of like at the end, one in the pit level 2. At the end of each one of these, like, high-level areas, there is a sparkly chest. Um, so, uh, one thing to note is if the chest can spit out a quest object, it is not a sparkly chest. It is a quest chest, which is separate. Um, if it sparkles and isn't located in Act 5, because remember, Act 5 has some of those chests that are just kind of sparkly, but they're just chests, um, then it is a sparkly chest. Um, then uh, in Act 5, the sparkly chest can be super chests. And those ones depend on the area. So Act 5 kind of has some troll stuff. It's either a super chest or a sparkly chest. Um, and let me see. Uh, Act 5. So the sparkly chest are the Abaddon, the Pit of Acheron, the Infernal Pit, the Drifter Cavern, and the Icy Cellar. Those are the only five sparkly chests. Any other chests that are sparkly are going to be super chests. Um, just as a heads up. Okay. Now, patterns. So, this is what you'll see people talking about. Um, because people often will talk about seeds, right? They say, oh, when you're farming for that Burr rune, you want to be on players three or players seven because you're going to have seeds that will contain Burr rune. When you're on players one or players five, you're, it's like less. And, and so there's, 
it's a very interesting thing. Essentially, there are 65,534 different seeds for chess. Okay? So, this is not counting whether a chest is locked or not, because that's rolled independently. Um, and uh, so that can be different, right? And then also the sparkly chest cases are rolled independently. But basically, um, the quality of a super chest drop, like we talked about before, is not related to the pattern. So whether there is all the rare items or all the magic items, that has nothing to do with it. That is a separate, separate independent roll. Whenever you pop a chest, 95% of the time it's blue, 5% of the time it's going to be rare, right? But the seeds themselves um are going to be when you pop the chest what items will specifically drop okay so i'm going to go ahead and bring up some images because these are really helpful um diablo 2 seeds for super chest Uh, where's the... Oh, that's just there. Come on. Somebody has to have a picture of this. All right, here's one with a code oh, rune, whatever. We'll just show this. Let me do that. Um, and then Burren. Cool. Okay, it's perfect. So Window capture. That picture looked kind of dirty until I looked at it again. Okay. Yeah, it looks hairy, I agree. <laughs> it's a map tile, I promise. Okay, so this, for instance, is a lower cross um, run that has a burr rune, right? This is also a lower cross run that has a burr rune. Is there something you notice about these two? They have the exact same items. Right? So this is the exact same drop seed right here occurring. Now this is very important. I mean, this is very important for, for recognizing and showing this, right? You'll notice that the gold amounts are all different. 379, 261, 450, 314. 368. You say the oil potion is missing, but you can actually see it right there. It's just not being displayed. But you can see that there is the oil potion. Okay, so the gold amounts are going to be different. But, no, it's not going to have the same gold amounts. They don't add up to the same total. Um, but, you are going to see Arbalest, Van Brazes, Rejuve, Greater Healing, Oil Potion, Burr Rune. Arbalest, Van Brazes, Rejuve Potion, Greater Healing, Oil Potion, Burr Rune, right? You're going to have the exact same items here because this is a very specific set drop seed, which is what we were talking about prior 
when we were discussing um, this right here, right? So uh, basically you're going to see this is true with all of these setups, all of the different runes, all the different whatever, and somebody has a table, and this is where people, um, I don't know where that table is exactly. Uh, don't see it. Um, but essentially there's a table where that's where people say, okay, run on player seven because this is going to have the best chances of getting Burr or Sirs because it has those seeds, everything like that, right? Um, and so this is uh, good to note. This is proof right here that these are seeded drops as such. Now remember, if one person drops this and the Arbalest and Vamp Braces are rare, that could totally happen because the seed is independent of that drop. Simple as that. Um, so they're going to have uh, these patterns that simply exist as such. Um, and then the items rolled on the stats are independent. The gold drops are independent. All of that stuff for it. Um, yeah. Okay. So hopefully that explains a little bit more about Super Chest. You are getting a guaranteed drop style whenever a Super Chest pops open. It's not doing all of these crazy rolls on all, or I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, super chest. It's not doing all these crazy rolls and all this stuff. It is doing a guaranteed seed drop on it. Um, and then just remember that locked versus unlocked is going to have um, its own kind of seeds, essentially, because the, the locked chest is going to have the, like, double chance, essentially, right? Um, so it's like the locked pattern is a superset of the unlocked pattern for a seed uh, of dropping right there. Um, so it'll do that roll and then do the other roll. Uh, okay, now let's see. For both regular and sparkly chest, some of the drop cycles are affected by the amount of magic find the player is wearing. So there are different versions of the patterns for all values. The explanation for this is easy. If, for example, at 25% magic find, an item passed the unique test, whereas it failed at 24%, then the case of the 24% MF additional seed updates have to be made in the course of the remaining quality selection. So while the item may be the same, its quality might change, and the seed after its quality selection uh, is finished, after the quality selection is finished, will differ between the 24% and the 25% case. Thank you, Fromm. Um, so once again, remember that magic find is going to have that effect there. All sparkly chest cases can go into a magic find dependent cycle, but it should be noted that this is extremely unlikely for case four, since that would necess necessitate a total of 40 no drops to occur, which once again, will just never case. Um, cases one, two, and three do not actually differ in terms of what items, including runes, are dropped. The forced quality selection in the first two cycles will not matter at all for the item selection. If the game chose unique, rare, or set, the forced item will either be magic plus or white slash gray. For this reason, when it comes to runes, these three cases are actually identical. Lastly, the relation between locked and unlocked patterns um, also holds here for the regular chest. The locked patterns are always supersets of the corresponding unlocked patterns. Um, so the locked case will have about twice the volume of items as the unlocked case. Uh, so they're more profitable, and a locked chest um, is going to be better, right, in those cases, which is why some people might have, they probably have noticed that a locked chest is better, right, um, for, for these regular sparkly chests. Um, let's see. And the chest run leads to a situation... Um, oh yeah, okay, so they're just saying people when counting patterns, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so some people count patterns, right, and they'll say, I dropped vamp braces and an arbalest and a burr rune, and somebody else will say, I dropped vamp braces and an arbalest and 
you know, uh, a, a circlet and blah, 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 and a burr rune. So that's a different case when actually it was just a locked chest. So it had that initial drop and then additional drops beyond that. Right. So just uh, something good to note. I want to see if we can run into another one of those super chest tiles. Let's go to, let's go to our favorite. Oh, what a map. I want that map. Okay, so again, sparkly chest. And again, we're gonna go through and drop a metric ton of items. And you can see We've got our qualities there, right? Um, now, there's one thing I want to sparkly chest. I'll see if I can find it. Right, so sparkly chests have the six basic cases. Only the first two are interest for set and unique drops. Um, so two out of a hundred times, the quality is going to be unique uh, when you open a sparkly chest. So you have a one in fifty chance. Um, and then when you when this case occurs, the sparkly chest will drop anywhere from zero to seven uniques. In case a drop, all items will either be unique or magical or less, no set items will drop. Then case B happens five out of 100 times, so you have a one in 20 chance, um, and this is where it will drop zero to seven set items. So you'll notice that you get set items um, when you are dropping this. And I can actually share this screen. Right, so here, this one is uh, kind of simpler. So there's there's the, the base, right? Zero to seven, zero to seven sets. Um, and then the four other drops are intended for rare or magical uh, or no intended quality. And that's 93 out of 100 times. Um, so this, this will ignore these. So these ones will talk about the set and unique drops because I think these are interesting. So whenever uh, unique or set occurs, the chest will pick four times using a set of tables. It will attempt to upgrade every item it picks to either unique or set. Often they cannot be upgraded because no drop was picked. Remember, no drop is always like a choice in these things, right? Um, so it'll say, grab an item. The item is no drop. Okay, nothing happens. The item dropped has no unique or set version. Gold, health potion, scroll, dimensional blade. Um, oh, what? And has a unique version. Uh, Archon plate, let's say. The item dropped does have a unique or set version, but the unique or set version cannot be generated because either the area level, aka um, Mang Song's lesson, right, is Q level 86, or the player's character level is lower than the unique slash set item's Q level. So, for instance, Three Moth found a Mang Song's lesson in a chest in a sparkly chest in the drifter cavern but you cannot drop that there like its q level is 86 and the area level is 84 or 85 i think it's 85 regardless you you it just physically can't drop from the chest so it tried to upgrade it doesn't have it and it can't do it right um if the first item dropped not a no drop an actual item is the intended quality unique or set then the code finishes picking four items to drop upgrades them all to unique slash set as possible and stops in this instance the yield is one to four unique or set items 
So this is what you're going to have most often, right? It's going to either drop one, two, three, or four uniques. However, if the first item dropped is not the intended quality, which happens the majority of the time, the code finishes the sequence of four picks, upgrading them as possible, and picks a second batch of another four items to drop. The same rules apply to the second batch of picks. They'll be upgraded to uniques or sets as possible. If the first item dropped from the second batch is of the intended quality, then the second batch terminates the sequence. If the first item of the second batch is not of the intended quality, the chest goes into a constellation prize mode and starts dropping items four at a time with quality magic or lower. Anywhere from four to 44 more items can then drop, except for one very rare case, uh, which uh, blah, blah, blah. Ignore those. So this is where you can get massive amounts of drops, right? Um, so here's kind of the pick odds for what is getting dropped. If it's going to be equipment, gold, junk, um, no drop. And this is depending on the number of players. So once again, this is why we always go like players eight when we're doing um, you know, popping these chests and things because the no drop frequency is going to be two. Much lower, right? So you have a much higher chance of getting items um, by increasing the player count. Um, equipment and good are categories that can be dropped for the intended qualities. Without the no drop factor, equipment and good will be picked 12 out of 40 times. Um, but including it, it means it'll only be picked 12 out of 44 to 140 times, right? Uh, and so it says at players four, the highest player mode achievable in single player, which is true um, because it, online player count versus single player player count are different. So players eight in single player counts as four partied players online when you are um, looking at like the drops from these things. Uh, so it's it's the same as eight unpartied players, I believe, online. Um, and so you'd have to be, like, partied, if I'm not mistaken. Warren can potentially correct me on that. Oh, I, yes. I said it did drop for um, three moth, but it can't drop. If that makes sense. So it wasn't unique, it was rare. Um, yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Settings makes a big difference. Um, blah, blah, blah. So it'll go and it'll pick through these sorts of things. These are just kind of all your drop odds. I'll put this link um, down below. Um, all amulets and rings can be upgraded. Jewels can be upgraded as well. Um, grand, jar grand charms can be upgraded if it's in an area of a, a level 70 or higher. So basically anywhere in hell, like they say. Um, and then blah, blah, blah. It goes through. Um, and here's kind of your dislike. You know, it'll pick from a treasure class right there. So, okay, the equipment category picked is TC Weapon 60. Um, and so here is, you know, the items that can drop um, and what their frequency is going to be then once it's chosen uh, the treasure class Weapon 60. So that's something that you'll want to look through um, when you're uh, looking at um just like treasure classes in general right certain treasure classes have their own rarity within them so you're going to get a heavenly stone less often than you'll get a blade bow in fact only one third of the time will you get a heavenly stone compared to a blade bow right um yeah so Blah, blah, blah. Some of the sparkling chests are quest chests. These are the ones that have quest items. We talked about that. Um, 
here are just some of the um, different things. And it looks like this is like the best item that can drop. So here you can see where they are at. In normal, in nightmare, and in hell. So you can get a Schaefer's hammer from this chest or a wind force from the drifter cavern chest, right? Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy. But you, once again, you cannot get Mang Song's lesson, which is the very important thing to note. Um, it's re relatively ignored that Drifter Cavern has a sparkly chest with a small chance of dropping from TC87. However, the chest can only drop items that have a Q level of 84 or less. This turns out to be most of the TC87, namely Death Cleaver, Dark Force Spawn, Astrians, Griswolds, uh, Griswolds Valor, Honor, Bokathos, blah, 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 Templar's Might, aka Soul Cage, yada, yada, yada. Um, yes. So it has the small chance to drop from weapon 87 or arm 87. So this is like I said, Mang Songs is TC 87. So it's in that weapon 87 treasure class, but it's Q level 86. Thus it is not possible to drop from that. Um, you know, so it has a very low drop chance to, to pick from that treasure class, um, but it technically is possible, and you can find Wind Force and stuff there. Um, mean number of uniques per case a drop. So generally, you're getting that one um, unique. Uh, but um, you can get multiples. You know, there's many times where I've gotten four uniques or something opening a chest, which is crazy. Um, but you can also have a seven unique drop, right? If it rolls, fails the case, upgrades three uniques, and then does four uniques after that on the next four. Um, the chances are one in 1.5 billion. Uh, so not often that you'll get a one, uh, a seven unique drop from a sparkly chest, but drops of two to five uniques are considerably more likely, um, which, like I said, I've, I've seen that many times. Uh, and I'm sure if you guys have watched my Holy Grail source, we pop the chest in the ancient tunnels all the time. And there's many times where we drop multiple uniques there. I found a perfect Mara's there, plenty of facets and all sorts of things. Um, so, you know, very nice. Uh, yeah. So, that hopefully goes through and gives you some explanation of chest. We can try and simplify and do kind of a TLDR, TLDW um, right here. Maybe answer a couple questions on it as well. But... Um, uh, no destruction. All super chests are going to have patterns. Um, the 65k patterns. LK super chests are just popular because there's four of them all right next to each other and they can drop fur rune. So it's just like super easy, quick to go to all of that stuff. But you'll see River of Flame, people like to farm those chests as well, because you can get multiple of those, uh, yada, yada, yada. How do these rules apply to PD2? Exactly the same. I don't think they've changed any of the chest logic whatsoever. Um, right, so three different kinds of chest. Four technically, if you count quest chest, um, which are sparkly chest that drop quest items. But for the most part, three different kinds of chest. Regular chest, which just look like regular chest. Uh, super chest, which look like regular chest, but are at specific tiles, and sparkly and have set patterns and do 95% uh, blue, 5% rare, um, and that's what your drops are going to be. Um, 
and sparkly chests, which have the six different cases. One in 50 times, you'll drop uh, unique items. One in um, 20 times, you'll drop, drop set items. And you can drop multiple of those very easily. And then the majority of other times, you'll drop a bunch of magic items and gold and all sorts of things. Um, regular chest have the magic find consideration and sparkly chests have the magic find consideration um whereas um super chests have no magic find consideration whatsoever and then locked versus unlocked is very important as well because locked is always going to be a super set of unlocked thank you chukabara right so if you have an unlocked chest and you, you can drop up to, you know, X amount of items, whatever it is. A locked version is always going to have the chance to do more because it has that extra cycle that it's going to be doing. Um, so always be uh, aware of that, right? Lock chest, carry your, tree, your, che your uh, keys around so you can open them if you really want to get more stuff. Um, other than that, you're just going to be looking at... Um, where the chest is because remember the uh level of the chest the level of the area is is very important the chest is going to be taking on the area level so if you're in the drifter cavern it's area level 84 and it can drop up to tc 87 so once again you can drop all of those amazing items that are q level 84 or below you can't drop mangs, but you can drop wind force. You can drop Templar's might. You can drop all sorts of things from that sparkly chest in there. Um, and so that's going to uh, apply, obviously, to sparkly chest there and, um, and regular. It's not super because you won't drop unique from super chest. But you're still going to be looking at those chests for, you know, rune drops and things like that, right? So once again, that's why a lot of people love to go to, like, lower Kuros for rune farming and all of this. Because there's a lot of quick super chests there. Go get your runes. Um, and you're just rolling through those 65,000 seeds. Plus the super set when you have the, the lock version on top of it as well. Um, and there's plenty of things like charms. I guess one of the things I should really um, show and talk about um, with like the super chest. Is super chest... Um, are great, great, great sources of so much, right? First off, they drop so many items. And one of the things you'll notice is they drop a lot of things like skulls, right? So that you'll see skulls all around. You'll see flawless diamonds. You'll see large charms. You'll see small charms. You'll see runes. Um, obviously, a ton of magic items as well. And rare items. So you get circlets. There's a flawless skull, a flawless topaz right in there. Um, you can get really great gold. So first up, they drop a lot of gold, but also items like scarab shell boots and such. Um, and then, you know, so this is where a lot of people will really um, farm not just for Bur rune, Sir rune, you know, low rune, all of that stuff. But they're going to come out here and they're going to be looking for, oh, I want to get a lot of GCs. I want to get a lot of SCs. I want to get a lot of gems. Um, you know, this is where I did my gem farming, uh, actually. Because, like, I mean, Flawless Diamond, Flawless Emerald. We've already found, like, five gems in, like, 45 seconds, you know. Uh, so there's really just a ton of stuff uh, to be dropped from these chests. I prefer farming these chests than really any um, other chest uh, in terms of, like, nobody really farms regular chests, but, you know, they can still drop stuff, right? It's like killing a monster. Um, but uh, compared to, like, sparkly chests, but that's because I'm not looking for, like, uniques as much, right? If I was looking for more uniques, then I would go and look at maybe um, doing that stuff more. So I would go, and I'd go to like, oh, let's go to... Is it on the other side of the Glacial Trail? I think that's where Drifter Cavern is. Yeah. Okay. Boom. And then here you can as well get your Flawless Diamonds, get all of those things. 
And like we said, one in 50 times, you're going to be dropping uniques. One in 20 times, you're going to be dropping set items. Let's make sure I'm on players eight. I think I was, but... We'll try and go until we get like a set or something, maybe. Um, let's do... Yeah, I mean, LK chests are probably the most popular chest. Um, but like I said, a lot of people like River of Flame as well. Uh, let me put that on. It's amazing how many... Uh, how much damage you can still take. I have 8k life. I need to go fire. Ooh, a lot of gems in that one. But yeah, how much damage you can take in this game. Took like 4k from two tainteds because I have negative res. So hopefully we can get it one soon. If not, we'll just call it good, but... Yeah. Alright. Uh, you guys get the idea, though. Right, so, once again, gems, charms, runes, um, uniques, yada, 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 all sorts of good stuff. Um, and it really is nice. So, overall, I'd say that uh, pretty much covers um, chest. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's a couple things that I might have left out. And you can get really intricate and into, like, crazy detailed of math of all of the stuff and you know we kind of talked a little bit about the different cases with the sparkly chest because that's really where a lot of the math is going to be coming in is what is the drop chance after it rolls three successful or three failed or whatever it is right it tries a drop cycle fails it um continues from there so you can really get into all the depths of that I will leave the links to some of the guides there just to help you guys out if you really want to look at that. But like I said, the essential thing to note is that you have your three different kinds of chest, not counting the quest chest, um, and kind of how each one plays plays around, right? And and the main bullet points of each of those. So when you go and you want to do LK farming, you, you want to get a burr rune, you want to find a unique from a chest or, you know, try and get facets, because they're actually not bad places to find facets, um, things like that. You know what you're looking for and what you need to have on your character. You know you need to put Magic Find on, you don't need to put it on, all of that stuff. Um, so hopefully that helps. And uh, thanks, YouTube. Mwah! See you guys later. Cool. Let me fill my water bottle really fast. pretty good. So Llama painted his room pink. That's right. When did we to get a new guided playthrough? We should we should get one soon. Danny Woosh! Mwah! Finally I can use chat again. You don't have to sub to use chat! Oh my god. 
How many times must we have this conversation? It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Any D2 remakes in Plan by Blizz? I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. Hey! Tony Hawk was, was great. It's a different team from the Warcraft Reforged team, if it is... If the rumors are true, it's not the Warcraft Reforged team, it is the Tony Hawk Remastered team. You ever tried PoE? Yeah, I like it. It's just I don't like the combat in it. Well, they did a Tony Hawk remaster. And apparently it was really good. A lot of people liked it. I haven't played it yet, but I've heard it's good. T-Bomb Jr., what was the sub message before? I couldn't hear it because my sub ran out. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought I had the game on. I was... Don't worry, I was just trying to find a, a unique or set case. I should give Kylie one of the flower paintings. Be romantic. Oh, there you go. Gosh dang it. Uh, how do I include this in the video? Alright, I'm just going to put it on at the end. So... Here you can see, we went and and popped a chest, and this was like a minute later, and we got a set chest, and it dropped us a lacquered plate. So you can see it succeeded on a set roll, and then it dropped three magic items after that, and killed it, right? So that is the, the way that this sparkly chest uh, played out. And conveniently, we're in the Drifter Cavern where you can find awesome items. Any of those items. And we found ourselves a Tal's Plate. So it's as simple as that. That is... Uh, all, all you need right there, right? You need Tal's plate, boom. Spend a minute at a sparkly chest, you got it. That's not actually true, but, um, you know, it, this, this does go to show that it's very possible. And with the 1 in 20 uh, chance of set items dropping, there you go. So, anyways. Hey, guys. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good idea, humanish. Wow, real toxic. It'll be on the YouTube. 